How do folks, Crap Car Hunter here, uh, another update on the Peugeot. So as we can see, the Peugeot, I'm working on it today. A few bits and pieces, I've been having a go at the paintwork to uh, bring back that lovely shininess. And also, on the last video, I took the starter motor off the old one, the old big heavy pig of a unit, and replaced it with a brand spanking new one that's a lot smaller, that's in the previous video. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I couldn't finish it off because the live wire that goes to the starter motor had been soldered on because the terminal had broken off. So today's job, which I've already done, is to do some heat shrinking. Ooh, got a bit too close in the face there. To do some heat shrinking and also put a new connector on. So here we go. So there is the new connector. Oh yes, and I've put a bit of heat shrinking around it as well. Very professional, like. And this is a connector here. Now I was going to replace it, but um, I'm going to be honest, it was pretty solid and didn't want to come apart. And with it being French, I didn't want to tug at it and break it and cause myself more aggro. So yeah, so just put a heat shrink tube on it, heated it up just to stop any moisture getting into the wires because uh, obviously our uh, lovely British climate we have uh, a freaking plane going over the top uh, yeah because of British climate water will ingress into the wire and destroy it so I've done that so I need to just put that wire on and hopefully we'll be able to start it another thing that I've been doing is giving the bodywork a bit of a polish so this wing here is, uh, is all very shiny and nice and smooth now. Uh, as you can see, the door isn't so shiny. And I also did a little bit on the bonnet as well. So there we go. So that's what the the bonnet's like. And oh, listen to that. Oh, rough. Uh, and then this is the bit that I've quickly polished up. Still not brilliant, but the shine's coming back. So that's a good thing, so. Uh, there's no paint lacquer on, on the vehicle, which for these older vehicles, you know, brilliant, because red cars usually suffer from paint lacquer. This one doesn't seem to have any issues with that, probably because it's an older paint job. Uh, if you come to this side, as you can see, you can see the comparison on the wings. So this is the nice, Listen to that, so oh, nice and shiny. Oh yeah, and then if we go to this really rough bit. Yeah, rough as old boots. So, time to put that wire on. Now I've got to fiddle it from here, from here, all under there and somewhere basically down into there uh, probably can't see it with this but you know somewhere down there so that's my next job and uh, then chuck the batch terminals on and try the starter motor to see if it will fire up Ooh, I can't wait uh, <clears throat> fitted the wire it was a bit difficult to get to uh, just uh, stopping for a bit of a snack. Uh, some lovely Walker's Thai chili chicken. Really nice. Mm. I can I can taste the uh, awesomeness from these. So the live wire's on. Now it was a bit of a fiddle figury to. Get a 10 mil spanner in there and, mm, 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 and try and squeeze both my arms in there but it's done um i've given any hoses that i've taken off whilst i was doing start mode they've all been checked to make sure they're tight i did un have to undo the uh oil filler <clears throat> that goes into the bottom of the block i took that out to, for more room in order to be able to get the old starter motor out and get the new one in so that's in, it's tightened up. Uh, 
So the next step, once I've finished my packet of crisps and my sausage roll, um, would be to fire her up and uh, give her a whirl. Now it has got an immobiliser on it. Uh, and very disconcertingly, well, or concertingly, I don't know, uh, if I just go and grab the keys. Uh, so the immobiliser on it. This is the immobiliser. That little, very, very 80s, 90s. Um, even though it's Peugeot 205, uh, the immobiliser says Ford. <laughs> oh, great. Ford immobiliser on a Peugeot. What could possibly go wrong? But anyway, I'll finish this up, uh, eating stuff in my face, and then I'll crack on and turn the camera to see it uh, hopefully fire up and not give me any issues. Right, time to fire up and uh, see how this goes. Got to climb through this way because um, I parked it a bit close that way. Cool. Hello. Right, here we go. She runs! So... Now the idle is a bit high because I haven't got the air box on. But, uh, oh. That's such a great feeling. The immobiliser, you had to hold it in and it was being a bit bored since it's a Ford immobiliser on it. Um, but it worked its magic, third time's a charm. It uh, turned itself off, so we climb aboard. Oh. See, the great thing about these older cars is you've got all this space so you can actually if you want to just scooch over, you can do with relatively ease. Relatively ease? <laughs> is that a word? So, here we go. So, here it is. There we go. She's got good oil pressure. Obviously, oil temp hasn't come up, but temp, bit low on the old Octane 30, uh, 95. But in all, it runs. Idle is a bit high. Now that's going to be down to the fact the airbox isn't on and it's quite cold out and uh, it hasn't been ran for quite a while. Now the guys that I bought it off, they had done an oil change. It's got a brand new oil filter on it. I checked the oil. It's got lovely clean oil. Um, yeah, I'm absolutely stoked with that you know, even the uh, 
And, it, and this is the thing about this little car. It's, it hasn't been, let me turn it off so we can. <sighs> Quietness. Great thing about this car, it hasn't been messed about with. So it is an absolute peach really. Um, it's even got the, still got the original little clock, digital clock. Uh, is a is about an hour behind. Um, even the even the original uh, light. I wonder if that works. Oh, let's let's give that a go. No, I, th I th ooh, got a bit too close to my face. Then I don't think the uh, lighter works. It's not, mind you, it might have to be. Hello, anything? Well, that's what you want to do. Uh, hmm. Mind you, I think that's seen better days. But it, it, it look, it hasn't even got a stereo in it. So this is a blanking plate for the stereo. Uh, I do believe it has got door speakers. I uh, don't know if there's any speakers in there. Um, but it's quite unusual, the fact that a lot of these cars they would have had a stereo put in them at some point uh, and this one still retains the original blanking plate uh, let's try we've got fans oh we've got fans ladies and gentlemen that's kind of in there maybe Oh, oh, half the dash is coming apart now. <laughs> uh, but the fans are working. Uh, that does sweet FA. I think that slightly. Uh, as you can see, it's. Uh, <laughs> it needs screwing back down. Someone hasn't. Uh, They've clearly had this car apart for something to, to do something to the dash. As we can see, it's. Uh... <laughs> oh, th this isn't down to whoever's uh, when it was originally built. This has clearly been taken apart at some point um, and not put back together, um, which I might do in a minute because I've got all these little screws, which is a telltale sign that the dash has been apart. But she's running good. Which is fantastic. Like I say, a bit high on idle. Ooh. Bit of blue smoke, if you can see out the back, but again, that's probably Because she's been sat for a while, she has had an oil change. Um... Yeah, not bad. It runs. And yeah. I'm chuffed with that. Oh, fantastic. Right, uh, I was gonna pack it in after getting the car started, a major win uh, with the starter motor, fantastic, it runs. Um, I tried it in the gears and sure enough, the wheels spin round. Uh, I was ready to pack up and wrap the car up, ready to you know work on it another day. Uh, and then I spotted this. This was on the side of the bumper. Now, traditionally, this is what's usually at the side. You have four of these, two at each side and two at the front. And you just bolt through, through the bumper, through a little hole, and then bolt through on the front, on the sides in the front. Well, we're seeing this. I was like, hmm, that doesn't look like a good fix. That needs sorting. It looks a bit ugly. Yeah. And then I opened a can of worms. Uh, ended up taking half the front off. Bugger. So, we can see 
Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. So it's clearly had a bit of patchwork and patchwork being the literal phase. Uh, this, that's not meant to be loose. But yeah, these, uh, the bumper is pretty much held on, like I said, at the side and at the front with these, which slot through the, f the bumper. So you got, uh, where is it? Where is it? Do, 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 do. So there we go there. So these just slot in and they poke through and you just bolt it through to the brackets and for the side this one's actually here uh, that one is snapped off so oh and uh, so as you said you got that there which has got the hole this one oh dear oh dear not good this one uh, there is thread on it there is a bolt but it's uh, it's on its last legs so need to rule so out of all of them only one of them is actually any use yay so luckily you can still order them brand new which will be the plan but the main issue to sort out is of course this welding this is the other side the drinker's side or driver's side so as you can see this is just where I've bent it back it's just had a cheap bit of plate and yeah not great and it's just been seam sealed as well it's had no no primer or anything like that it's just they've just seam sealed the whole thing same with that one uh, also the one of the connectors for the horns was well it wasn't really a connector it was the wire just wrapped around the terminal uh, yeah bugger but you know at the end of the day it is uh, is an old car it's what 34 years old so it's not doing too bad um, I've had a look around for any more rot and rust uh, and to be fair it's it's fairly clean um, <laughs> fairly clean <gasps> what a joke uh, yeah so plan is uh, I've not long purchased myself a new welder uh, a gas one so I'll be cutting them out and bending and properly shaping in the metal and instead of putting some pigeon poop welds on the top uh, I'll try and actually do them properly uh, and blend it in a bit better and make it look nice and then I suppose I best take half the front off take even more the front off the radiator and I might as well clean it rush treat it prime it give it a couple of coats of paint I love old cars, I do. <laughs> so that's where I'm going to stop now before I take any more of it apart. Uh, luckily, fairly simple to put back together again. Uh, I've also taken off the, the wheel arch trims uh, as well because a couple of the clips have, have broken. So there they are. So. So luckily I managed to save some of these. That one was broken. Um, but in all, they're not in bad condition. I've managed to unscrew a lot of these, the old ones. Uh, there is a bit of a knack to doing them. Uh, so, but I will be getting a, oh, pardon me, getting a arch fitting kit as well. So at least I've got some spares just in case. Because uh, spares are always handy to have. It's just having the room to, to have them. Oh dear. What have I got myself in for? Oh dear. Ooh. Anyway, I hope you like this video. Uh, the next one up will probably be, might be this. But I am off because today 
as I'm filming this is Friday the 3rd of February and tomorrow Saturday I am going to collect the new project car another one uh, this time it is a kind of underrated hot hatch of the 90s uh, I had one back in the mid 2000s uh, great car weighs about as much as a well as a cigarette packet they're very light cars very quick uh, so a video of that will be coming up shortly uh, and obviously more videos on this so if you like this video I have got one other one up of this car uh, there's going to be loads more so if you like this kind of thing of watching this face struggle with stuff like this and finding crap like that then uh, please give the video a thumbs up and uh, click and subscribe for more updates uh, until then have a good one See you later.